CDL Transit Bus Pre-Trip Inspection. The most important procedure a driver must complete before beginning a trip. It's crucial for the safety of your passengers and the protection of your equipment. And here's how you do it. Check the seatbelt. Make sure it is not ripped or frayed. It should be securely fastened and adjust properly. If equipped, make sure the shoulder bell is not ripped or frayed. Check the assembly so that it is securely mounted. Turn on the master switch. If equipped with ABS, tell the tester when the ABS warning light illuminates and turns off. When performing the safety start, you must say the transmission is in neutral and the parking brake is engaged. Now press the start button. Before beginning the air supply system check, make sure you've reached at least 100 PSI. Perform the air leak check with the engine off. Be sure to turn the master switch on so that the buzzer and lights will let you know when the air pressure is low. Release the parking brake and hold the service brake down for one minute. Let the tester know that the air pressure drops no more than 3 PSI in one minute. Failing to do this may result in disqualification. With the engine off, but the master switch still on, begin fanning the brake pedal rapidly and state when the buzzer and light activates. You must tell the tester the low air warning activated at 60 PSI or above or you may be disqualified. Continue fanning the brake pedal rapidly, noting the air pressure when the parking brake valve pops out. It should be between 20 and 45 PSI. Be sure to tell the tester the parking brake valve popped out with the pressure between 20 and 45 PSI or you may be disqualified. Repeat the safety start. Make sure you tell the tester that it's in neutral and the parking brake is engaged. Then go ahead and start the bus. Allow the pressure to build until the governor cuts out. This should be between 100 and 125 PSI. Be sure to tell the tester this. Check your windshield to be sure it is clean with no illegal stickers, no obstructions, or damage to the glass. Mirrors should be clean, properly adjusted, with no cracks or damage that impair the vision. Be sure that your wipers and washers operate smoothly, are not damaged, and are secure. Demonstrate that the horn is operational. Check to be sure that the heater and defroster are working. Identify each gauge and be sure they're within the normal ranges. Check your left turn signal, your right turn signal, your high beams, and your four-way flashers. Go ahead and open the window so you can communicate with the tester who will be outside as you check your lights. Have them check the high beams, the low beams, the left and right turn signal, and the four-way flashers. Also have them check that the clearance lights are working. You need to perform these same tests at the rear of the vehicle. Exiting and re-entering the vehicle, you must do so safely by facing the vehicle and maintaining a three-point of contact method with the vehicle at all times. Check your exterior mirrors to be sure they are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not missing any nuts or bolts, and are clean and properly adjusted. Check the clearance lights. 
Check your windshield wipers to be sure they are not damaged and that they are secure. Be sure to identify where the windshield washer reservoir is located and that the washer fluid is above the refill mark. Be sure that the steering box is securely mounted to the frame, not missing any nuts or bolts, no power steering fluid leaks or cracks in the steering box housing. Be sure that the power steering hoses show no signs of abrasions, bulges, or cuts, or cracks. Check the steering linkage to be sure that all the connecting links, arms, rods from the steering box to the wheel are not excessively worn or cracked. Check the joints and sockets to be sure that they are not missing any nuts, bolts, or cotta keys, or that they're not worn and loose. Check the turn signals and the reflectors to be sure they're not cracked, damaged, or broken. Check the tread to be sure there's at least 430 seconds on the steering axle tires and tread is even. Check the rims for dents or damage to the bead flange. Be sure that there are no visible cracks or welding repairs. Check that the, all the lug nuts are present and have no cracks or distortions. Be sure there are no signs of being loose, such as rust trails or shiny threads. Check the hub oil axle seal to be sure it's not leaking and that it's at the proper level. Be sure that the valve stems are not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the brake linings to be sure that they are at least a quarter inch thick. Make sure they are not cracked, broken, have any missing or loose parts, and that there is no grease or visible oil. Be sure the brake drums have no cracks, grooves, holes, or signs of grease and oil on the brake drum. Check the slack adjusters to be sure they are secure, not broken, not missing, and have no loose parts. Check the brake adjustment and slack adjuster pushrod stroke according to the manufacturer's specifications. Be sure that the hoses and lines, couplings, and fittings are securely connected and not leaking. Be sure the hoses are not cut or cracked, worn or frayed, and not rubbing or leaking. Check the brake chamber for cracks and dents. Be sure that it's securely mounted with no loose or missing nuts or bolts, have no loose or missing clamps, and are not leaking. Check the leaf springs to be sure they are not missing, shifted, cracked, or broken. If equipped, check for broken or distorted coil springs. Check the mounts and hangers. Be sure they are not cracked, broken. Check that the bushings are not excessively worn, damaged, or missing. The U-bolt should be securely mounted, not loose, cracked, or broken or missing. Check the shock absorbers to be sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, loose, missing, and that they do not have any leaks. Check that the airbags have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, are not deflated or leaking, and are securely mounted with no loose or missing bolts. Be sure that the torque arm is securely mounted and is not damaged. Check the frame to be sure it has no cracks or bends, there are no loose or missing bolts or cracks in the cross members. Check the drive shaft to be sure it is not cracked or bent, that is securely mounted, has no missing nuts or bolts, and there are no debris in the U-joints. The rear axle checks are the same as the front axle, excluding a few items. The tire should have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts to the sidewall, any signs of tread separation. The tread depth should be at least 230 seconds in all any major grooves. Valve stems are not missing, broken, or damaged, and they should have proper inflation. The dual tires should not be touching or have debris caught in between. The mud flaps should be securely mounted, not excessively damaged, and extend down at least to the center of the axle. As you come around the back side of the bus, be sure to check all the lights. Then open the engine compartment. Check under the bus for fresh fluid leaks. Be able to identify either fuel, oil, or coolant leaks. Check the oil level. Identify where the dipstick is located and check that the oil level is within a safe operating range. Check the coolant level. Check that the coolant level is within a safe operating range. Inspect the reservoir sight glass. Identify the location of the water pump and check that the unit is securely mounted. Check for any fluid leaks from the water pump. Check for missing nuts or bolts. Check that the hoses show no signs of abrasions, bulges, cuts, or cracks, and there's no damage from 
parts rubbing together. Identify the exhaust system and make sure it is securely mounted and tightly connected with no loose or missing nuts, bolts, clamps, or mounting brackets. There's no signs of cracks or holes or severe dents, exhaust leaks, rust, or carbon soot. Check the condition of the belts. They should not be cracked, worn, or frayed. Check the tension of the belts. They should not deflect more than one half to three quarters of an inch from the center of the belt. Identify where the power steering fluid dipstick is located and check that the power steering fluid is at the proper level. Identify the location of the air compressor and check that the unit is securely mounted. Check for any fluid or air leaks from the compressor. Check for missing nuts and bolts. Identify the location of the alternator and make sure that it is secure and there are no missing nuts or bolts. Close the engine compartment and proceed to the curb side of the bus. On the curb side of the vehicle, also check the fuel tank to make sure that it's securely mounted, no missing nuts or bolts or mounting parts, and the cap is tight and the lines are not leaking. Make sure to check the handrails and be sure that the hinges are secure with seals intact. Check the entry doors to be sure that they operate smoothly, are not damaged, close securely from the inside. Check the entryway steps to be sure they are clear, the tread is not excessively worn or loose, the step lights are working, and that there is nothing blocking the aisle way. The passenger lift should be secure, not damaged, leaking, or missing parts. Be sure the lift is retracted and securely latched. Be sure to explain how the lift is correctly operated. Check the emergency safety equipment to be sure it is present. There should be a fire extinguisher that is properly rated and secure. Identify where the circuit breakers or fuses are located. There should be three reflective triangles. Check the passenger seating. Make sure that the seat frames are not broken and that the frames are firmly attached to the floor. The seat cushions should be securely attached to the seat frames as well. Check all the emergency exits, identify where all of them are, be sure that the hinges are secured and the seals are intact. Demonstrate one emergency exit other than the primary entrance. Be sure it operates smoothly, closes securely, and is not damaged. Finally, you need to do the parking brake check. This requires that you drive the vehicle forward about five miles an hour and activate the parking brake or that you try to accelerate against the parking brake with the transmission and drive. The service brake check requires that the vehicle be driven forward and applying the service brake and noting any pull to one side or the other 